Hello, one and all, welcome back. This time we are starting Sherlock Holmes The Awakened. This is a re-release of a game that Frogwares first published in 2008. I'm hoping that it makes use of the more modern engine that we saw in Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. Um, and I'm hoping uh, that it also makes use of the improvements in the game mechanics that we saw um, in uh, Sherlock Holmes versus Jack the Ripper. Um, Frogwares, as I now know, is based partly at least in the Ukraine, so that message there is related to that. Uh, it looks like, yeah, we're using, we're using UE. I don't know which version, but either way, it will be better. So, this one I understand is a little bit more of, uh, less of, perhaps of a detective game. I know that this one has to deal with Lovecraftian elements. That's all I really know about it. So, how about we get started and find out together. I'm already hooked. Keep in mind, this is like 20 years after... Dr. Watson, would you kindly close the door behind you so that we can limit the price of your carelessness to merely hours of work rather than days? My apologies, Mr. Holmes. I found myself rather taken aback. <laughs> I saw tidy houses in war-torn Afghanistan. Are those my surgical needles? I ran out of tax and the matter required immediate attention. Was that my supper? Plainly not, for I was the one who ate it. Hmm, I set it aside for this evening. And for that I am grateful. Is that my bed? Watson, since you've proven yourself a master of observation, might I ask you to apply your skills to a more pertinent question? Namely, the whereabouts of today's newspapers. They are the key to everything. The newsboy is usually reliable. Medically speaking, I often find that the key to everything is good sleep. In a bed. Your papers are here, on the table. Let us see what the postman brought today. Alright, I'm already pleased with this. I'm already hooked. I am... Liking this so far, it is very much a return to the Sherlock Holmes chapter one. As a matter of fact, the character models are the same. And let me say um, that uh, I really like... I, I found while I was playing Sherlock Holmes versus Jack the Ripper um, that I was, as I was playing through and seeing the older versions of the games, the older version of these characters, and of course these characters, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, this is Sherlock Holmes and everything, but the Sherlock Holmes that I saw in Chapter 1 and the one that I hope that I'm seeing here is very much the Frogwares version of this character. And I, I really, it's a, I mean, after hours of playing the game, I, I didn't think that I cared that much, but I actually really like these characters. And uh, while playing Sherlock Holmes vs. Jack the Ripper with the absolutely just strange, unnatural dialogue and just weird non sequiturs and stuff, which is, again, part of it being a game and made by uh, developers, but maybe have English as a, a second language. I'm not positive on that one, but my feelings on the matter. Um, the emotion that uh, Frogwares now puts into both the writing and acting here for Sherlock and John uh, was definitely sorely missed in Jack the Ripper. It hadn't yet been developed. You know, it was kind of an earlier look at the character. So I'm really happy to be able to, to play through this character again. I'm glad that they used the same models. I'm glad that we're going to get to continue their story because they feel like a completely different Sherlock Holmes than the one that we just got done playing with in, in Jack the Ripper. So let's do this. I am excited to run through this now. Um, first thing I'm going to do is make sure that uh, my menu is still as it was. Oh, we got a little bit of a difference here. A little bit. This isn't quite exactly the same. Okay. So we've got... Um, was this our deductions as before? Map. Oops. 
Oh, we've got our wardrobe here. That's made a return. That's nice. What else we got here? Um, I can see that the character design is much more sane than it was in Chapter 1. We don't have endless amounts of chains and shit just ripping off of us, um, which is nice. That was a little bit silly. We've got Sherlock's jacket. No elbow patches yet. Very dapper. Nice. Sherlock's overcoat. Um, like everything Ukrainian, bold, durable, and unbeatable. Uh, the wind coat. I wonder if these are all default or if I have some of these because I have a save from um, chapter one. Actually, I uninstalled chapter one, so maybe casual. I mean, these are some of the same uniforms. Like uh, I recognize most of these. <clears> hmm. <throat> the worst suit in the game. Just awful. Okay. <laughs> And the gray suit. Okay, we are going to go... Uh, we'll go with uh, Sherlock's jacket here. Hats. We have the Deerstalker. Top hat. Fez. Bowler hat. Gotta go with the Deerstalker. Classic Sherlock look. Square glasses. Windsor glasses. Handlebar mustache. Is this the same as the one we got from the Mission with the Magician? I hope so. Sideburns. Oh, the facial hair here is a little bit of an issue. Look at that. Okay, that's strange. It seemed to work more or less fine for Chapter 1. It certainly wasn't going to win any prizes, but it was fine. But that's, that's fine. Fake bruises. And what is this now? Oh, this is uh, John's attire, as before. Watson suit, Watson uh, overcoat, got the, with the hat, and we've got the we've got the Ukrainian getup. Uh, okay, okay. So it does seem uh, as it was before. We don't have anything in our casebook yet because we just got started. No, well, good. We are oriented. Consider me oriented. I can see that uh, the old Baker Street setup seems to have largely remained the same, although obviously much updated here in this version of the game. We've got the fireplace, we've got the desks, we've got the table, and I'm guessing still John's room and Sherlock's room. Sherlock has been busy. All right, let's see what we got then. We've got something here on the table. Tensions between England and Sweden are running high after a series of unfortunate mishaps during a recent visit to London by Swedish Princess Ildur. Chief among the scandals was the embarrassment of the British diplomatic corps as a result of the unexplained disappearances of Princess Ildur's personal guard. The longtime member of her inner circle took the opportunity to explore London while off duty and never returned from his late night promenade. A spokesman for the police assures the advertiser that they are confident the bodyguard will be located as he is a striking representative of the Scandinavian people. A man like that gets noticed, whether by his peers at the Gentlemen's Club or the fair nightingales who comfort them. Local gossip, all of it uninteresting. <clears throat> Could not agree more. Uh, post. Cannot open. Another letter from Verna. Uh, they never reply, but they keep coming. Not pleased to see that he is at all present, even in male form, but it is what it is. Barnes Bookshop. The order from Barnes Bookshop has arrived, Doctor. Barnes insists on delivering the books to our door, even though we could easily walk to his shop. That's good service. I don't see the Strand. Where is it? Pardon me? I am on the precipice of uncovering a pattern of crime across London spanning many months and involving many men. A missing paper cannot be a coincidence. That's preposterous. My dear fellow, life is infinitely stranger than anything which the mind of man can invent. Well, life used your True. newspaper to wipe its posterior. Wisdom. So after that unpleasant discovery this morning, I disposed of it. But in lieu of the Strand, perhaps I can deliver you something equally tantalizing. I have just returned from a patient of mine, Captain Stemwick, who... No, no, that will not do. Grab your coat, Dr. Watson. Let us hope nobody has collected the dustbin. Okay, in search of a missing paper. What's the 6 of 50 thing? What is that? 
Watson brought the morning's post, but the strand is missing. He disposed of it before entering the building because the pages were soiled. There is still a chance it might be found in the dustbin. Modern Morning Deliveries is a book for Watson. It was for Mr. Barnes, the bookseller who prefers to do deliveries himself. Attached to the book is Barnes' business card, which includes the address of his store just around the corner. Tensions. Okay, that's exactly what we saw before. Anything else? I see nothing else of interest. Oh, that bust is still here. It's been moved from Sherlock's room. Here we have a tiny white elephant. Excellent. What have we been working on over here? I'm close. I know it. I just need one more piece to crack the case. Or is it one more crack to piece the case? The dustbin is yours for the digging, Mr. Holmes. Is it out here? Why would it be out here? Uh, it's not in there. It's not over there. It's rainy today. Why not dress in something more appropriate for the weather? Open the case book. Okay, sure. I will uh, then wear the overcoat. How about? All right. Sounds good. Oh, and of course, John. We can't forget about John. He has to, he has to put his hat on. Um, here? No. Here? No. Here? No. Must be out here. 221B Baker Street. Looks fantastic. It really does. Um, is this one of our irregulars over here? No? Okay. Where in the hell am I supposed to go? Okay, here's a bin. A cactus spine. If it gets in your skin, it's awfully tricky to remove, and when laced with poison, the perfect assassination tool. I think our paper might be wet. You were mistaken, Dr. Watson. The paper was indeed dirtied, but not how you implied. It's potting soil. See, Watson? The conspiracy is real. Someone tried to poison me. Poison? You? That's madness. Okay. Get oh, the sure. strand. Get your copy of the strand here. Hello. Sorry, Mr. Holmes. I just sold my Then why are you barking? Last. Then why are you still here? Boss pays by the hour. No sense in returning early. Okay. Any breaking news today? The dock accident. It's the talk of the town. Yes, yes. Besides the tribe on the front page, anything about burglaries? I'm not sure, sir. You're a bright child. I presume you see everything that goes on around here? Nothing gets past me, mister. Then tell me, did you notice anyone suspicious at my door this morning? Hmm. Like the man with your newspaper? Precisely. What do you know? I know the value of a shilling. Dr. Watson. Cool. Now I can take the day off. Okay. Um, well, tell me about him first. Can you describe the man you saw? He was carrying a lot of books. Up to his chin, they were. Never heard of a well-read assassin. Looks can deceive. Hence the appeal of disguises. Okay. What happened to the paper? Did you see what he was up to? Nah, not really. I saw him approaching your house, but I had a customer. Then there's a loud bang. I ducked down. Not because I was scared, because I wasn't. I had to protect the merchandise. And all I could see was him kneeling at your door. So the bookseller came, pot got knocked over, the pot contained a cactus. I can see that I'm reading too much into this. Which way did he go? Not sure. I was distracted by customers. Sorry. All right. You earned your shilling. That'll be all. Thanks, Mr. Holmes. Maybe I could be your eyes and ears. If you have more shillings. Voice acting is night and day compared to the older game. Just Get the strand. fantastic. Get copy of the strand here. Okay. Now you got a new question in your mind palace. Open the case book and navigate to the mind palace. I select relevant pieces. Get to the answer. And then so here we have this. And here we have this. And here we have this. Book from Barnes. Cactus spine, potentially poisoned. Um, 
Okay, yes, Barnes the bookseller. Is that it? Okay, um, alright, I see these icons, they look familiar, so we have to pin. And head to Barnes, I assume. Isn't that Mr. Holmes' murder? Yes, Barnes has his quirks, but he also has his scruples. Not every pawn knows it's part of a game. Get the strand. Get your copy mm -hmm. of the strand here. So, Barnes is Z to zoom. Um, there's no address here. Just looking for Barnes the bookseller, I guess. Could be that way. Could be this way. Pawn broker. Yeah, okay, kid. Okay, kid. You can stop. You can stop, kid. You can, you can stop now. Is it in the map? That's Baker Street. Okay, I don't see it in the map either. Guess we're just gonna look around. Stenwick's Manor. Smoke shop. Drugstore, what is the sign? Millinery. Pianos and organs. News and reviews. They might have a copy of the paper. Um, must be the other way. <clears throat> I wonder if it's around the corner here. Let's try that. We found it. But where? Oh, there it is. New books. Charles Dickens. Is that? Ah. Edgar Allan Poe and M. Google. Barnes, why would you try to kill me? I know what you did. You shit on my paper. Bags on his eyes. Ink on his fingers. A knee. He's heavily on his right leg, okay. High heeled shoes. Mr. Barnes has large bags under his eyes, the result of poor sleep and stress. He has developed a limp, likely the result of an attack. He wears high heels to look taller or stronger, presumably to deter future violence. Mr. Barnes is being threatened by someone who might be involved in a plot against me or is a workaholic, meaning that his... He's not very... Oh, sorry. He has bags under his eyes from work. He is not very confident, tries to appear taller. He seems unlikely that such a person would be involved in a murder plot, even if the ink on his hand suggests he is the one who soiled the paper. Nevertheless, Mr. Barnes could still be a pawn in a bigger plan without his knowledge. I mean, it seems to me like he's... Probably a workaholic. Mr. Barnes, a word. Oh, for goodness sake. Oh, that was guilty. Why would he run suddenly? Who, uh, who goes there? Sherlock Holmes. Now will you please? Mr. Holmes. Golly, I did not see you come in. Unlikely. Would you care to answer some questions for me? Well, I wish I could, but I am deep in the weeds with work. How about we uh, reschedule in a month or two? Come now, Mr. Barnes. It will only take a moment. No, really deep in the weeds with, uh, with important things. Well, help yourself to any book. Just take it a pay later. I trust you, Mr. Holmes. 
Barnes doesn't seem like himself. Why is he acting this way? He's escaping out the back. Doctor. Let's find a way to coax him out. Z to highlight interactive areas in the environment around you. And that's our pinging function. A ladder. The ladder is broken recently, judging by the freshness of the wood. So he hurt his leg falling off the ladder. Oh, a bunny. So, oh, a dog. A good boy. It's a basset hound. I thought it was a bunny because it is very small for a basset hound. It must be a puppy. A ping. A painting, just if as I, I suspected. More uh, alright, I imagine in your line of work that you would have a better imagination than that, but perhaps not. Um, some sort of symbol, A. Eh? A catalog of exotic plants on Barnes's counter. The name of the catalog reads Everlasting Plants for an Everlasting Love. Clearly talking about cacti. As I suspected. Basics of cryptoanalysis, cryptography in Egypt. It appears Barnes has an interesting hobby. And that is interesting. Interesting to me, anyway. What else we got? Ping. Okay. Why can't I ping? Oh, there it is. Uh, one there, one there, one there. Nothing there. Okay, here we go. It's raining outside. The finest view London has to offer. Just talking about that woman. That seems. In the language of Microsoft agents, it's a sign. Dried flowers are replaced when the job is done. I wonder who the recipient is. Ah, uh, you see. So it was a conspiracy. An improvised stand. But it does make the flowers more visible. Here they are. Barnes has always been a little odd, but this is uncharacteristic even for him. Oh. Did you teleport again? I thought you... Oh. Ah, Tree of Life. Interesting. Does this John teleport too? Oh, he actually physically walks. That is very cool. Okay, then let's come and check the door. Uh, apologies, but I can't hear you. Please come back later. Okay. What else is there to interact with? I thought we about got it. Or is it the door I'm meant to interact with? To go and head him off around outside. This way, John. He's going to sneak out the back. Um. Okay, then. No, there is no going around the back, apparently. Excuse me, Excuse wizard. Me. Just one question. I can't tell you because I don't know. Okay, then. Um, all right then. The window, no. To the wall, no. Uh, your twin brother there has been pissing for at least a couple of minutes now. So then what am I supposed to do, I wonder? Is there more to pin? Um, blep, 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 blep. Boop. Boop. Barnes broken letter. Um. Book from Barnes. No. Cryptology. Cryptog kip cryptology. Cryptography. Exotic plants. Cactus spine. Connect them. Connect them. Do it. Okay. E. Um, okay, undo that. This is different. This is different than we had before. Uh, it's like we have several dimensions to connect here. Okay, Barnes Broken Ladder. Character portrait from his wounded leg. And... 
Newsboys Testament. No. Okay. Barnes is involved in the scheme. Um, cryptology books. And the dead flowers. Okay. But that seems to be a correct connection, so... London Advertiser. And the Exotic Plants Catalog. Okay. The Cactus Spine. And I have no documents or testimonies to go along with it. Okay. Cactus spine potentially poisoned. I have nothing to go along with that, though. Okay. I'm a little bit confused. A little bit. So space to unpin evidence. I can't. Can't read. Okay, let's let's read the help here. This might help us a little bit. Because this is a slightly different system than we had before. Questions are shown in the Mind Palace. Answer all the questions to progress to the next chapter. This icon on HUD notifies you when there is a new question to answer. See to get to the casebook. In the Mind Palace, select the question you want to answer. Okay. After selecting a question, try to answer it by linking relevant evidence. All evidence is broken into three categories. Each category appears on a different screen. Press E to switch between the categories. And that's it. And you get a bonus for answering it on the first try. Um, uh, keep investigating until you do. Okay. Alright. Then... I don't have any, like, concentration evidence, or at least there's the icon's not there. Um, is there... S Maybe behind the counter? It's just the door and John. That's all I see. That's an awful big bone for a little guy. The I already looked at that. Broken recently, judging by the freshness of the wood. I already looked at that. Wow, this is the first tutorial mission. Looking for a cactus needle in a haystack. Hmm. A spine in a book stack? No, come on, Watson, think. The first mission, and it's a tutorial mission, and I'm struggling this much. I can do concentration, so that is still a thing, but I don't have any concentration evidence. Alright, it's gotta be a mind palace thing. I'm just gonna have to trial and error my... But it's, see, I, think I can't, because I can't deselect... The dead flowers on display. And I have no documents related to the dead flowers. I got the cactus spine or the books. That's it. And I can't select this. I can't deselect that. If I can't unpin 
the dead flowers. You mentioned the view. So, okay. All right. All right. So the flowers are meant to be viewed by somebody. So I do have to leave. Who can see the flowers? And there's a flower shop right across the street. He was talking about the lady. I bet, I bet we have to talk to her. The weather is dreary, isn't it? To be fair, my flowers could use the rainfall. Hey, uh, did you notice the flowers across the street? How long they've been there? Anybody come by, take a look at them? Hey, Hello puppy. There. What's your name? Lily. I know. Not very original. Okay. I feel like should have worn something warmer. I feel like she should have information for us. Why? Encouraging people to stop and smell the roses. Our national emblem. God save the queen. Ah, cactus. The pot is damaged. The blow was severe, but softened by something. Like my goddamn newspaper. Is this what I found in my dustbin? It must take patience and care to produce a bloom so beautiful. I imagine so. I merely sell them. Anything tickle your fancy, Mr. Holmes? Um, perhaps. Hold very still. And I'm going to stare at you. Beauty or concealment. Well, she looks pretty fashionable. Voids eye contact or distracted. Honor and deceased husband. Changed shoes upon arrival. Unusual for work attire. Yeah, she does look like she's pretty done up. Mrs. Fleming wears a mourning brooch in memory of her late husband. Her dress is made from an expensive fabric that is not suitable for work. Her shoes show no traces of mud. She must have changed them when she arrived. Her eyes constantly dart around the street, seemingly in search for something. Perhaps she is waiting for someone. While Mrs. Fleming cherishes the memory of her departed husband, she is trying to move on, as suggested by her makeup and nice outfit. Perhaps she is dressing to attract someone. Um, someone's attention or simply because she has learned to love herself again still grieving uses makeup to hide her tear stained cheeks her dress is made from an expensive fabric that is not suitable outside of work her shoes show no traces of mud she must have changed them when she arrived uh, she wears a morning brooch and her husband is staring off of the emotional attachment that's completely Miss Fleming is still I think that she looks like she's planning to meet somebody. Which if you ask me makes sense, so Does this really matter? Is this like neither of those things are like really of consequence to anything right now mm -hmm. unless she's the one that the flowers are meant to convey. Whatever, who cares? Mrs. Fleming, you look particularly lovely today. Is there a reason? Does a woman need a reason to look or feel beautiful? No, but your distant look suggests you seek one man's gaze in particular. Who told you that? Nobody. Merely a keen eye and some simple deduction. Well, I'll kindly ask you to keep your keen eye to yourself, Mr. Holmes. Okay. Can I ask her about the fucking flowers now? It's all really all I care about. What do you make of the flowers in Barn's shop window? Well, they could use a bit of water. Do they mean anything to you? Mean anything how? I'm not sure I follow Mr. Holmes. Why do you think they're there? Are you suggesting the flowers are for me? It seems likely, does it not? Oh. Yep. I hope you're right. <laughs> Okay, uh, then what's with the getup? I'm afraid I can't help with that, Mr. Holmes. Okay. 
Um, tell me about the cactus. One of these things is not like the other. Come again? The cactus. Those fearsome spines can prove a devil to remove. And the sap is often toxic. And a rose thorn can give you tetanus, but we still grow them. The cactus seems comparatively harmless. Though you have me thinking it must be valuable. I was under the impression that you knew its price already. Your guess is as good as mine. The first time I saw this cactus was when I came back from my break. So... Okay, a cactus just showed up and you didn't question it? Weird. Okay, uh, what about this book of exotic plants? I can't help with that, Mr. No? Okay. Um... What do you think of Mr. Barnes? Are you familiar with Mr. Barnes? Yes. No, not really. Well, in a way. What on earth does that mean? I know who he is, of course. But we haven't shared much more than a look. A look? Yes. Each morning I go for a walk in the park with my dog. And most days I spot Mr. Barnes there with his new puppy. So we see each other. Actually, we once met briefly while our dogs played. He was quiet and seemed unsteady as he approached. But since then, we've never spoken. I often see him staring through the shop window. Sometimes I wonder what he thinks about that would etch such longing onto his face. Okay, I see. All right, um, cactus and cracked pots. Coming on barns. Okay. Attention to Miss Fleming, a florist. I yeah, hope she will come to the shop and give him watering advice, or something could be a symbol of his desperation. Barnes anonymously gifted her a cactus, which she ordered from the catalog on his counter. A questionable choice, but for Barnes, a symbol of his eternal love, since the catalog presents these cacti as immortal. Plainly, this is the same cactus he dropped in the... Um, okay. But the, that doesn't answer why he ran from me when I came in. Oh, I suppose he was ashamed and he didn't want to admit that he ruined our paper. I, uh... I think perhaps I have been chasing shadows. Do not despair, Mr. Holmes. Even the best of us make mistakes. We better tell Mr. Barnes what we've learned. Hey, puppy. Mr. Barnes, I know what you did, and I know why you did it. I'm sorry, Mr. Holmes. I can't hear you very well from behind the door. You ordered a cactus from the plant catalogue and then left it for Mrs. Fleming as a gift. You place flowers in the window to get her attention, and wear high heels to appear taller and more desirable. You are her secret admirer. I couldn't read this morning's edition of The Strand because it was covered in soil and spines. I know you dropped a cactus on it and then fled. Barnes, it's Dr. Watson. Rest assured, we are not interested in disclosing your personal affairs to anyone, including Mrs. Fleming. Please come out. Uh, all right, then. So, you know what happened, then? I was on my way back from the post office, having picked up the cactus and some books. It was quite an awkward package, heavy, too. And when I got to your door, I dropped the cactus in your paper. Forgive. He did that paper to prove a theory and prevent a crime. Your actions were rather disruptive. Your clumsiness carrying the post is matched only by the clumsiness of your romantic gesture. Oh, it's true. I am useless with this sort of thing. I'm not even sure if Mrs. Fleming noticed. Um... As in most things in life, truth is the answer. Cease with the obtruse signals and anonymous gifts, and simply talk to the woman. What is the worst that can happen? She rejects you, and you are freed from this endless purgatory. That... Yes, you are correct, of course. I do have a slight tendency to overthink things. Thank you. So, at last, we return to the matter of the paper. I'm investigating a string of burglaries. Did you perhaps read of any before the edition was spoiled? I don't recall, but you're welcome to read our copy for yourself. You the one I knocked the on the floor. Here. Yeah, I knocked it on the floor earlier. Well, naturally. I am a bookseller. I have a subscription to every magazine and newspaper in London. 
So you ought to be familiar with the concept of burying the lead. I... Oh, no. Uh, my apologies, Mr. Holmes. I'll make it up to you however I can. I am an expert on obscure languages and translation and... and uh... Yes, yes, OK. Just give me the paper. Saltpeter explosion rocks docks. Locals at the Port of London had a rude awakening last night with loud bangs and thick red smoke disturbing the piece. Merchant ship Moskva had docked at Pier N3 in the early evening and route to Europe when it was rocked by several concussive explosions. The Port Authority is yet to comment on the incident and it's unknown if any crew members were aboard at the time. Eyewitnesses report seeing the saltpeter leaking into the river, but with the area still off limits to workers and the public, maybe sometime before we have a full account of what transpired. Come, Dr. Watson. Let us put this matter behind us. Farewell, Mr. Barnes. I hope to hear good news about you and Mrs. Fleming. It said 45 or 50. Is there more for me to do and I missed it, or what? Okay. Well, that was an utter waste of time. An assassination did seem rather unlikely. There was supposed to be another burglary. I was certain of it. Hmm. Something you wish to say, Doctor? No. Well, only that you have a remarkable faculty for deduction and pattern recognition. And that perhaps, if ill-applied... I see things that are not there. Yes. It is London. There will always be burglaries. It doesn't have to mean anything. So it seems. Forgive me. Without something to occupy my mind, I turn into an entirely different animal. Which brings us back to my news from earlier. I think I have a case for you, a real one. Truly? Indeed. Though perhaps not as thrilling as your stories from Cordona. A patient of mine, Captain Stenwick, told me that his servant disappeared. I said I knew just the man to help. What do you say? Oh, Watson. Yes, I know it's not the most tantalizing mystery, nor the story to launch my writing career, but it's brilliant. Let's go. Oh, good. Well, his house is nearby. Come. Okay, I believe that's Stenic Manor that we saw before. Yeah, these newer versions of the games, these newer Frog Rear Sherlock Holmes games, these are definite winners. Not much further now. Is this lousy attitude of yours because of my altercation with Inspector Lockhart? Did he put you up to this? Sir, the Inspector has nothing to do with it. I'm telling you the same thing I tell anyone seeking a missing person. <clears throat> Good day, gentlemen. Forgive the intrusion. Captain Stenwick, this is my colleague Sherlock Holmes, the consulting detective I told you about. At last, a professional. This useless officer refuses to do anything about Kimmy here, my missing servant. What was your name again? I shall be certain to inform your superiors. Sergeant Ruffles. And it's my superiors who made this decision, sir. Other missing people. Have there been other disappearances lately? Of course, here and there. But when life is tough and opportunity comes knocking, you can't blame those who answer. Why has the police department decided not to help? We investigate murders, thefts, fraud, arson, real crimes. A servant walking away from his master is not our highest priority. That said, if we find him here breaking the law, we'll be sure to notify Captain Stenwick. Now, I must be off. Best of luck in your search. <laughs> you heard that, didn't you? The way that man spoke to me. I shall need your written testimony. Then we can lodge a complaint. Captain, perhaps Mr. Holmes' time is better spent learning about your servant, so that he may begin his investigation. Ah, yes. Quite right. Fire away. Okay. Um, tell me about Kimihia. Tell me about Kimihia. He's foreign. A Maori. All the way from New Zealand. Biggest man you've ever seen, and as strong as two. Dark hair and fearsome tattoos. He doesn't speak a whit of English, never bothered to learn. But I made do with pointing. I invested a lot of money in him, so he must be found. Mm hmm. Really interested in helping you. When did you last see your servant? Kimmy here normally brings me the morning papers, but yesterday I had to get them myself. He must have escaped the night before yesterday. 
Night before yesterday. May I see your servant's bedroom? This shack is in the garden. You can't miss it. Did you search the room? Of course, but only to check he wasn't lying dead inside. Everything seemed normal at a glance. Why do you think he would have run away? Is there any reason Kimahir may have left? I should think not. He had all he could have wanted. Gainful employment, new clothes, and all the cabbage he could eat. Right. Anything else missing? Did Kimahir make off with anything of value? Heavens no. I would have mentioned it to Sergeant Ruffles. Still, he must have fled with some money on his person. No, no. I kept his wages in my safe. For security. Yeah, I bet. I take it this is the first time Kimahir has vanished? Undoubtedly. The man seemed terrified of the city. I think it was all the noise. He never left this estate. Should he cause any damage, I will bear the responsibility, for it was I who rescued him from savagery and brought him here to England in the first place. All right, Captain. I think I have enough to get started. We rescued him from damage. savagery, huh? Go ahead. I'll be here, mentally drafting my complaint. Did you know that this was the kind of case you were roping me into? Okay. No, can't get to the gardens that way. Let's go check out this shack that you keep your servant in. I'm sure it's very nice. Oh yeah. Who could ever want more than this? Concentration. Oh, two new wardrobe items acquired. Okay, what did I get? Oh. Cordona suit. No, jacket. And then the jacket version. Neat. But, uh... We got other things here. There does Kimihia's trail lead. What, is he responsible for the... Or did he die in the explosion? Alright, we gotta pin this. And I'm gonna concentrate. Cartwheels. Who could have left these tracks? They seem fresh. Impressive. The sack of grain retained the shape of an impact. Someone hit their head here. Yes, I can see that now. Um, oh, yeah. Spyglass. A small navy spyglass. Huh. Uh, yeah, looking more and more like Kimihia is not going to be found. A scrap of Hessian. These were sturdy boxes. It would have required a serious blow to break them. 60 of 120? Oh my god. Um. Nothing there, nothing there. A Maori nose flute. Ngurus, they're called. Clothes made of Hessian. This thing really so miserly. If you have to ask, no air. Bone. Button chops. The remains of a meal. A rock. A heavy chemical odor. Lend me your nose, Doctor. Ah. I'll never forget that smell after my time in Afghanistan. That's an opioid, Mr. Holmes, a narcotic. Okay. The ashes are long since cold. Is this a tanifa, a Maori water spirit, or something else? Either way, it's giving me chills. What else? Mm -hmm. 
red cloth. Of smoke. Someone plugged the chimney. Yeah, and you put some uh, fucking hash on the fire, hot box the whole shack. Which is very wasteful since look at how this shack is just not exactly watertight. Okay. Is that it? There must be more. Um, oh, yeah, we got a well, we got a dialogue. And we do have a concentration, so let's pin that and follow the tracks, I'm guessing. This lock is quite unusual. It appears that the key should be bent to the right. Hmm. Okay. So not that wagon, but a different one. Oh, there's something else. Oh, got some stuff here. Right here, often used. Pile of logs fallen. Someone moved a cart to this spot and then took it elsewhere. I can't see it anywhere in the garden. Ah, this is the. Uh... Oh no. Okay, so this is something to do with the concentration. Just meant to lead us to near where the clues can be found. As such. Oh no. This is. Uh, this is the. Um... Reconstruction thing, so... R? And what does he have on here? Some food or something? What else is our alternative? No. There is no alternative, okay? That is what it is, I guess. And this one... Have, well, he would have fallen face first. Okay. It seems to indicate that there are multiple possibilities, because look, if I'm near this node, it shows that there are three things there, so there should be three possibilities, but I can't actually switch between them. So, and this one over here is the last one. Same. Maybe I haven't discovered evidence to provide alternative possibilities. Is that what it is? Now we need this one, we need to, no, we need to pin it, and then we need to concentrate, see if we can figure out what became of the key, I suppose. Where will we find that? I guess I'm supposed to talk to Stenek again about some of the stuff I found, because I have some dialogue clues. What do we have over here? Um... The door to your garden has an interesting lock. Yes, I have uncommon locks on every door of my mansion. It makes them harder to pick. Kimmy here and I both had a set of keys. I'll need to borrow them. No, you'll need to do what I tell you to do. Examine the garden. Wow. Super rude. Um... I thought you were meant to be intelligent. I thought you were meant to be intelligent. I came across a pile of Hessian clothes in the shack. Are they Kimahir's? Yes. I had to give him something to clothe himself. He seemed unfazed by his bare skin, but I found it distracting. Yeah, I bet you did. I thought you were meant to be intelligent. 
Is this spyglass familiar? I don't recognize it. Could it be Kimahir's, perhaps? I doubt it. I never saw him with it, nor could I suggest how he might have come by it. Okay. So he won't give me the keys, huh? Um, so well then I wonder what am I supposed to do? I've entered in the investigation area, so it does that. What's this? Ladder? Um, what's this here? Knee print hiding. Looks like a knee print. Chewing tobacco. Chewing tobacco. Um, and what? Tools? Print. A shoe print, roughly size 11, with a worn out sole. These are a workman's boots. Someone knelt here. The amount of chewing tobacco suggests they were waiting a while. Amazing, Mr. Holmes, to read the ground like an open book. Okay, um. Doesn't seem likely that it was Kimmy here. We don't have any indication that he used tobacco or even wore shoes. Uh, and whoever it was, I presume, had the spyglass. This didn't belong to either of them. So it's either this one or... Okay, it must be this one because that's where the spyglass is. And now we have alternatives for these other ones. Okay. Kimihio was kidnapped. He's the one on the cart. Nope. Yep. And here he fell. Um, nope. Nope. I guess it must be that one. Um, yeah, that's probably it, since we don't have any other evidence of drug use or anything. Probably drugged him with the, uh, opiates, plugged up the chimney. Which means that, uh, this one is actually probably the one where he's being dragged out. Yeah, it's probably that one. But we still have one more, uh, one more investigation spot here. to find um, it's whatever connects this to that if he's over here he's got to get over here somehow there's got to be another connecting point um, it says okay this is still a concentration one so where I thought I've been through this whole thing here. Um, hmm. There's one more spot I haven't found. Do I need to talk to Stenic again? Uh, 
Maybe there's more to his dialogue that I missed. Do you happen to know Kimihir's shoe size? I wouldn't have the foggiest, but I'm sure it was enormous. Not that it matters. He spent his life barefoot. Despite my best efforts, he simply did not take to shoes. Has Kimihir ever indulged in tobacco? No. The man doesn't even drink. Are you certain? I found chewing tobacco in the garden. I controlled Kimihir's expenses since he struggled with the currency. I would have known if he used tobacco. Okay. Why are you still here? Not sure, to be honest with you. Okay. This is the only one I have left. I gotta find the key. Here we go. Down to the left. Missing. Okay. Um. Oh, there it is. Okay. Either he unlocked it, or, yep, it was him. Validate. Surveilling from afar, the intruder waited for a window of opportunity. When Kimihir went to sleep, the man crept up to the shack and slipped narcotics down the chimney pipe, then blocked it with a cloth. Kimihir inhaled the sedative and fell into a deep sleep. The intruder tried to move him, but the man was heavier than expected. The intruder fell on the sack and dropped his spyglass. In order to transport the servant, he had to use the cart. The final challenge was opening the garden door. Luckily for our intruder, Kimahir had the key in his shack. Remarkable. It makes total sense. Okay, but Kimahir is gone, so... That's not great. Best have found something by now, gentlemen. Someone had eyes on Kartrak's daughter of the yard. Someone had eyes on Kimihia. I fear that someone may have spied upon Kimihia. Likely the owner of the spyglass I found earlier. It appears they were watching for some time, as there was an impressive amount of chewing tobacco on the ground. And your point? You said that you checked the shack earlier. Did you notice the cart tracks near it? Now, one ought to expect a servant to make regular use of such a thing. Indeed, I would have overlooked the detail were it not for the cart's absence. If, as you say, Kimahir never leaves your estate, then where did it go? I expect answers from you, Mr. Holmes, not questions. I found the residue of narcotics in Kimahir's brazier. There are several explanations, perhaps your servant's recreational interest, or an attempt at poisoning. Cut to the chase, Mr. Holmes. I won't keep you in suspense any longer, Captain. Kimahir was abducted by the owner of the spyglass. When your servant fell asleep, he slipped a narcotic into Kimahir's brazier to make him sleep even more soundly. In order to carry a man as large as Kimahir, the intruder stole the cart and rolled him right out of your garden. Now, hold on. All this simply to tell me what I already know. Why haven't you found him yet? I only arrived a moment ago. It is, frankly, incredible that I have already deduced so much. Every second you dawdle here, waiting for me to stroke your ego, is another second wasted. 
I'm not interested in the how, the why, or the who. I am only interested in recovering my investment. Spare me the claptrap, boy, and go and fetch my servant. Um, I mean, I don't want to leave Kimmy here out there still unrecovered, but I also don't want to necessarily return him to this life. <laughs> Unless, well, um, whatever. Uh, the point is, Captain, we're telling you this for a reason. The intruder fled through the garden door, and we need a key to follow his trail. Well, then you should have led with that. Here you go. I hope you'll return soon with good news. And in the meantime, please teach your companion the art of brevity. Fuck this guy. Let's get out of here, John. the cart sturdy rope professionally tied in a Portuguese bowline this knot is often used by sailors to create a bosun's chair mm. Roy Salisbury could that be the name of our man a strange substance I have my suspicions based on the color and consistency, but would you care to have salt, a guess, Salt, you know, salt. Well, it's odorless, but from the way it absorbs water, I'd say salt, Peter. Then we're in agreement. Well done. Where's the last bit of evidence? Come on, where's the last one? picked up grass along the way. Kimahir's cart, I gather. Okay. What are the notable features of the abductor? Okay. Uh, of the abductor. Spyglass. Sailor's not. Does this trail lead? Um, um, Shack Sailor, Doctor is a Sailor. Well, I'm supposed to the Port of London. Uh, there was a recent Salt Peter accident in the Port of London. Everything suggests that. Okay, so to the Port of London. Not so useless after all. The saltpeter accident, Doctor, do you recall? The Port of London, of course. The footwear, the spyglass. Indeed, we shall need to take a cab there. A large pile of horse droppings. 
Many cigarette butts. Someone stood here for hours. There was a cab waiting here. Our abductor slipped in and then off into the night. Okay, where can I find a cab? Hello, horse. There's a cab. Greetings, my good man. Cannot return after leaving. Be sure to finish everything you wanted to do here. Where to, Gav? The Port of London, please. I will show you where to stop. To hell in a handcart. The Blood Red Knight, Chapter 2. Oh, did I... I hope I got everything. I thought I was just moving to another part of the same thing. Mr. Holmes, what a compelling mystery we have stumbled upon. Perhaps I have the premise of my next novel. Uh, on kidnapping does not a story make. Stop! A black cat crossed before us. It's a bad omen. I did not take you for the superstitious type, Doctor. Such things are mere fantasies, tricks of a feeble mind. One imagines a physician would keep a surer footing in reality. Perhaps, before the war, my time abroad was difficult. Once, I came across an Afghan, bleeding, who I could not save. He pressed a rosary into my hand. A gift, he said so as to gain God's favor after that. Dr. Watson? Yes, well, I shan't get into details, but sometime later I found myself lost in the desert. Dehydration set in, and things grew ever more dire. The man's words came to me. I said a prayer and placed the rosary on a rock. A gift to gain God's favor. And you were rescued? Yes. A detachment of British soldiers found me. To whom I'm grateful. Without their diligence, you would not be standing here, and I would not have this case. I'm sure you have another explanation prepared, Mr. Holmes, but I think I shall cling to the occasional superstition all the same. To each his own, Dr. Watson. So long as it does not interfere with my methods, do it. We must press on, cat or no cat. The question remains, why abduct Kimmy here? Indeed, why? The cursed mermaid. Okay, I think I'm uh, going to stop there for part one. Next time we will discover the fate of Kimihia and uh, finish up the first mission. Proceed with the rest of the game. So you have uh, yourself a nice day. Take care of yourself and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.